Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World and welcome to my 5 tips for new players on Stellaris, the new 4x grand strategy game by Paradox. Now Paradox games like Crusader Kings and Europe Universalis and Victoria are known to be very complicated but also lots of fun. And Stellaris is no different. It's fairly complicated and it's easy to get overwhelmed as a new player with all the options you have and that's why I thought I would make a uh, video containing five tips for new players in order to help you get started with the game. So uh, let's see! Tip number one. Although your sphere of influence, which in my case is here this purple blob, does restrict where you can build for example mining stations and research outposts, it doesn't actually restrict your colony ships at all. You can actually make colonies outside your sphere of influence. Case in point, here it's very important. Uh, I just found this Gaia world which actually has 100% habitability, however it is very close to another civilization, so I really need to colonize this fast. And you actually can. So if I click on this world, you can see that with the colony ship, I can just colonize this planet and the colony ship will fly there and then I will have colonized it. So you don't have to wait until you envelop a system within your sphere of influence in order to colonize it. Tip number two, there are many ways of doing things pretty fast in this game. For example, there are here these two celestial bodies, both with minerals in them. If I wanted to, I could of course click on my construction ship, say build some mining station here and then queue up another one to build a mining station here. However, you can do that much faster. So if I go out of this map and go into the big map, click on my construction ship, I can basically just right click on the system and click build mining stations. As you can see here it immediately tallies up the total so now I have to pay 162 for two mining stations and it immediately queues up those commands. So if I hover over here you can see building a mining station and then building a mining station on the other celestial body. So that's one way of doing things faster. You can also queue up commands. For example, here I have my science ship and I want it to survey quite a lot of systems because giving it individual commands all the time is a bit annoying. So you can just choose a science ship. You can right click on a system. You can say survey system, then hold shift and then right click on this one, survey system, then hold shift still, right click here, survey system. And now you queued up all those orders. If I hover over here, you can see that it's surveying a lot of things. So that will keep it busy for a while. You can also quickly select your units and planets by using the shortcuts here in the left bottom of the screen. For example, if I press one, I get my uh, world, my planet. And if I press four, I, for example, get my construction ship. If you double tap four, then I go towards my construction ship. I focus my camera on it. So this is a very easy way of uh, selecting things really fast without having to click uh, through your outliner. Tip number three, you can increase the efficiency of your ground troops by giving them so-called attachments. For example, here on my planet, I have been recruiting some armies and you can see I have defensive armies as well as assault armies. So if you click on one of those, you can see one of these squares here with attachment. So you can give them attachments by clicking on it and then you can see the options you have. At the moment, I only have two options, but you can unlock uh, more options throughout the game. Um, so, for example, here I have new concrete fortifications, which increase my health and decrease my upkeep. Or I can give them hunter-killer drone swarms, which increase their damage. As you can see here, my damage at the moment is 2.84 health damage and 3.27 morale damage. And if I click on it, that damage has increased. So now I have attached uh, the drone swarms to this army and now they will be doing more damage if I invade a planet with it. So. Don't forget that you can attach these attachments. Tip number four is related to the map. So with the map there is not that much information in the default view. For example, I can only see my sphere of influence here, this purple blob, and which planets I'm already extracting resources from. However, there is much more information to be had if you click on this icon here, Details Map Mode. So if you click on it, or hold Alt for toggling, then you can see much more information. For example, I can see which uh, bodies I'm not extracting resources of yet. For example, here in this system, I can get six minerals and some science, so it would be a really good idea to send a construction ship there. Furthermore, you can see the sensor range of your ships. As you can see here, kind of this Mickey Mouse-like green outline and this outline here is caused by my ships that have a sensor range. And in, within that sensor range, I can see enemies or allies uh, basically flying, so I can actually uh, notice and detect them. 
Furthermore, I can see anomalies and I can see if there's planets. For example, here is an ocean world which I really can't inhabit because my species, like the desert world here, this green one. You can also see whether there are planets here. For example, this sign ship is at the moment here in this system. And you can see that there's two potentially habitable planets in the system, one tropical world and one arid world that I haven't surveyed yet. So this detailed map mode is really nice to have. Furthermore, how do you know whether a system is within your sphere of influence? Because you cannot build outside of your influence. I can show that by going here, clicking on my construction ship, and I want to build a mineral station here. But I can't because it's not within my borders. However, it really looks like it's within my borders. But that's because this map is actually in 3D, as you can see here. But the sphere of influence is on a 2D plane. So the developers have very nicely added these little sticks here. And this hexagonal tile, that is what needs to be in your sphere of influence. So as you can see here, this one isn't. So I need to get a bit more influence and envelop this one in order to be able to build there. So be sure not to look at the planets themselves, but to actually look at these hexagons. Tip number five is about diplomacy and probably only useful to you if you are very new to Paradox games. So here in Contacts you can click on Diplomacy for different races that you've encountered. For example here there is the Confederation of Opa Realms and they kind of like me. If I click on Communicate and I want to make a trade deal, then let's say I want to trade a research agreement for, let's say, star charts. And that's fine. There, you can see there a positive score of 3, so if I click on Confirm, I can get this trade going. However, if I click on Research Agreement, that we exchange research agreement, suddenly it's minus thousand. So how would I ever get plus thousand? That's a bit much to ask. So you can actually hover over this and that's very true for most stats in Paradox games and it gives me a lot of information and this tells me that the Confederation of Abba Realms won't trade with me due to their wary attitude. So until they are not wary anymore they will never uh, give me research agreement. I can also for example ask for migration access and that's also they don't want to do that because of the wary attitude and so on. Sometimes they need to be allies, sometimes it's just because they are wary but in case to in order to figure that out you just need to hover over this and you will find out why. So these were my five tips for new players on Stellaris. They're by no means extensive but I really hope you found them useful and see you next time.